three, two, and welcome listeners or viewers, depending how you are witnessing the grooviness that is assiduous dust, home of the OTSCP on the spot collaborative poem. And I have with us today the lovely Elena, 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 blah, 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 (laughs) blah. I am just in a different place. I've been moved to this place of this giant fan in my office. And I have Elena Karina Burn. 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 Glad I didn't burn that one too much with us today. It should be great for Assiduous Dust episode number 15. I'm so honored to have her on the show. I can't wait to hear about her new work, hear about her and her her lovely plants and that mask pottery thing she has out. Here's a little bit about Alina. For those who aren't familiar with her work, she is a Pushcart Prize and Best American Poetry recipient. Alina Karina Byrne is the author of five books, including the forthcoming If This Makes You Nervous. Does it? Does it? <laughs> With Omni Dawn. Uh, or 2020, and no 2021. Don't. Oh, 2021, and no don't. What books press? Also 2021. And no, re- no, no. <laughs> no don't. No don't. And no don't for what books press for 2020. Everything go. got messed up with the pandemic. And I'm going to later ask you about what what happened with the pandemic because I know you do the Los Angeles uh, Times Festival uh, of Books. And you're also a freelance uh, lecturer, private editor, a poetry consultant and moderator, that is, for the Los Angeles Times Festival of Books, and the literary program director for the Ruskin Art Club. Um, Elena's work can be found in Poetry Magazine, the Paris Review, the Academy of American Poets, Poem a Day, Verse Daily, Bomb, Kenyan Review, Volt, Narrative, Plume, Kyoto Journal, Poetry International, a joint journal. There's so many. LARB and New American Writing. While attending ASUB's Writing and Contemporary Media program, Lena is writing in new genres and completing a book of essays called Voyeur Hour, Poetry, Art, Film, and Desire. Yes, I too desire that, and so should you. In 2018, she completed her three years as one of the final judges for the Kate and Kingsley Tufts Awards in Poetry. It's based in Claremont, California. I went to Pitzer College. So yeah, CGU. And in 2019, her term for the Georgia Poetry Circuit. She's currently teaching online classes for Poetry Bar, Poetry School UK, and Beyond Baroque Literary Arts Center. Please visit her website after this lovely groovy show at Elena Karina Burn. Dot com and that's burn b y r n e don't be burned dot com Elena thank you so much um for joining us um first off I want to say uh, I know we had some technical issues going getting this settled but and you can't use this as uh as I ask every guest what's a new thing that you have coming or that you haven't done yet. You can't say this assiduous dust episode that doesn't count. What's something that you're looking forward to doing that's upcoming? Uh, You know, uh, I know you have a a book coming. Uh, Not just Uh, that, but what's something, you know, something insane you want to do with poetry, like skydiving and write a poem or something more (laughs) grounded. Like, you know, maybe I heard somebody that is doing a sit on a toilet, um, you know, uh, and Zoom and read poetry from their toilet thing. That was an event that apparently happened a while back. So sounds what's like your per- thing? Sounds like performance art. Um, in fact, I wouldn't mind doing a performance art piece that combines poetry. I have two things. I'm going to hopefully soon, um, I've been so busy with my MFA work, but I'm going to hopefully soon be working with Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Joyce Jenkins, who is the editor of Poetry Flash, and it's a really important magazine and periodical, both online and in print. Her daughter, um, Claire Anna Baker, is an incredible artist, and we're going to be doing some kind of collaboration. So I'm very excited about that. 
I'm also very excited um, that I will be, um, that my interview with a poet, filmmaker, screenwriter, and story writer, Perry James, will be coming out in LARB in January sometime. So. Wow. What we do is we do a round of applause. <laughs> snap, 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 clap, 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 <laughs> round of applause. So I say that you, congratulations. Wow. Well, thank that's you. That's a lot. It'll be hard to then to one up that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I. I don't look at it that way. I look at all of these things as dialogues. In fact, that's what those are intended to be. Dialogues with other professions and other artists. And, mm-hmm. you know, this is what, this is all we have right now while we're in, um, mm-hmm. in our health exile, I should say. Health exile. I like that. I've also heard, you know, people will use uh, isolation. I like to say solitude, social solitude, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, health exile. I like that. So, so what is, um, you know, I know that you, you put on, uh, one of the things that you put on is for the uh, Los Angeles Times uh, Festival of Books, that you're the poetry consultant and moderator for that. And that this year, um, I think a, a surprise shocker, um, a pandemic occurred. Mm-hmm. And, and that made a challenge. So how did you handle that? What went in your mind because as an individual for other individuals who are handling events I think it's important to know okay from as a person you know how do I handle this how do I address this and perhaps how does this maybe there's a poem that comes out of as a result of this or what and well something uh, something better than that actually but I have to say at first it was it was you know it was obviously disappointing um and it's the first time in 24 years I've been doing this for 24 years first time in 24 years that we had to cancel the festival which is the largest festival by the way book festival in the United States Um, usually we have over 150,000 people that attend so as you can imagine that wasn't going to happen but the other Mm -hmm. difficulty that arose for me is the poetry stage um, consultant and moderator. I ch- I choose the poets with um, the the overall uh, festival director Ann Binney, and you know we work very hard over the year trying to um, choose poets with new books that are diverse, and and I mean diverse in every way, um, whether it's ethnicity or it's um, you know age or region or style. You know it's a real balancing act, but. But the disappointment that came about with this is that that the Los Angeles Times realized, and understandably, that they couldn't, they do very elaborate recordings for the right. events, and they just couldn't financially handle putting 600 writers on um, on the screen, let's let's say, you know, doing a virtual event. Yeah, how does that virtual work? Event for- if you think about that for even breakout rooms or something, like, oh, that's, it costs a lot, that'd be. It's just, yeah, yeah it was just, um, you know, it's not something that was doable. So I, I felt really bad for the poets because it's, it's for a lot of poets, it's a, it's a very big event because we sell a lot of books. We obviously, the lar- the, audiences are so large and it's a chance for them also you know many writers to fly from across the country or sometimes yeah. even internationally but so I came up with the idea of doing our own virtual event with Beyond Baroque Literary Arts Center and right. Quentin, the executive director Quentin Ring embraced this completely. I love Quentin he's yeah. terrific he's the new uh the new head he, of Han show and he's he's, he's great a yeah, he's really and and so he took the bull by the reins, so to speak, and he has a fabulous um, video editor, and we we got most of the majority of the poets that were booked for the festival. We got them to record themselves, and just to record a few poems. It was a six minute video uh, um, that they each had. You know, that was the time frame, and. Um, we're putting and then we added a few extra poets on because to make up for the few that we that we right, lost yeah. you know people are traveling or whatever the reasons are you know they're that, in that, Antarctica 
Right, right. right. <laughs> Who knows? I why. think Dennis, Dennis Smith was in Europe somewhere, and it was just it wasn't really manageable for him. So, so there were a number of other writers that we would we decided to invite. Um, at the last minute, who also had new books, so that we could give them, you know, some of this visibility. And then we split them up into four groups. We had our first video um, mm -hmm. last week, and then we're doing three or, more. Or not, or that was a, a bit ago. This is. Oh, um, that's true, because this is right. Where this is, you're, you're going to be, I'm going to see you in January. But yes, maybe, you're going to see a copy of you, an imposter of you. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's called Poetry Stage Redux, and you, or, or however you want to pronounce it, and you can go on the Beyond Baroque site to find these videos, and you can also go to their YouTube channel. So I'm, I'm very, very pleased the way it turned out, and I think um, it looks like uh, we might be doing it again this year. Who knows? If Absolutely, if, for, for 2021. That is, if we can't have a safe space for 150,000 people. Right. And I know that you, you had this in, uh, so this was uh, in, uh, for November. Um, yes. Yes, November, in, yeah. December. Yes. yes. And so for hopefully, um, who knows what will happen in a certain amount of time. You know, I had Rick Lupert on. Uh, oh, for, yeah, he's great. For a Sidious Dust for an <laughs> earlier episode. At a certain point uh, of time, and we, I recorded to him, and we had said we had left the episode at the end. Who knows what will happen by the time this is released? And we were joking, right. and we had said traffic might be, there might be no traffic in L.A. And this is in <laughs> January that we had recorded it, or like beginning of February. And wow. so when it released... That was a reality for a certain time when it ended up released. I think we released that episode in, in March. So oh, wow. traffic. So dreams can come true in certain ways. <laughs> um, well, I think the dream that's come true is that programs like yours and, and so many others are mm -hmm. able to reach a much broader audience, a larger Yeah, because more people are online. And that's a great thing. And I'm, I'm really curious about your thoughts about that because I know you've you played with form and experimentalism in your work. And also I know that um, theater is really big uh, for your background. And so I wonder if, would you, you say, cause you know how people have, I, I know um, different individuals have different means of experimentalism that in fact, what's going on in your life actually can influence the form the actual form or the shape, not just the content, but the shape of the poem, the, 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 the essence of the style of how it's done. Yeah. And so I wondered, for example, like you could have, I know that Suzanne uh, Lumpus has done something with tweets from hell of Donald uh, Trump of, with, uh, with, with, with uh, Twitter that was done and performed at Beyond Baroque yeah. and, and got a yeah. standing ovation, you know, <laughs> as well. I was there for that. It was groovy, very groovy. Has there been for you that you've noticed that, um, you know, in your work, as well as with the times that the chaos of the nature of the pandemic has influenced a bit of your mode of expression of the form of your poetry? Um, yeah, I think somewhat. I mean, I want to start. As well as throughout I'm, the your your you know life and kind of take us at, at who yeah, you are at certain I times. To, yeah, I want to back up there because I want to say that um, I truly believe that language begins in the body and mm -hmm. that the physiology of the phrases can be as important as, as you know, I mean, and not to take, because I, I'm not of the school where you can just like make, I mean, it's one thing to make the the physical object of the poem on the page look yeah, like the, art, but I sure. don't feel yeah, that, like you I, could I, shape I, it in a circle or whatever, but that's yeah, different. But, that's but, not what I'm talking about. No, and yeah, I'm not and you, talking about yeah. that either. I'm talking about, I mean, because, you know, the, the length, the musicality of the phrases and the, you know, the music persuades it, it, um, it, it is sort of the metronome of our breathing. I mean, I think Robert Hass said um, poetry was and language itself is the movement of breath. I th and I'm one of my favorite quotes that I've used often is Roland Barthes says language is the skin. 
And mm -hmm. so I feel that, you know, I don't, I would normally not attach the word experimental to myself because I'm, I'm not trying for that. Yeah. It's that but I. But that's more what people will see it as. And that's the thing right. is that you have this relationship. But I, I also think it, it is like of just, it's really, it's more in alignment is what it is. Well, I feel too that, and I know that this is relates to a lot of what you're doing in your program, but, but I'm very, I'm very much, I used to be an athlete. I was mm -hmm. a sprinter and um, I actually ran in the all state championships. And I, I feel that I have a relationship to that idea of speed. I feel like my mind is always going in motion. Things are always overlapping. And so you could say in a sense that, that, that my poetry reflects that the way that I you run in poetry. I function in the world um, with, a lot of energy and a lot of um, forward <laughs> movement, sometimes to my detriment. The muse that ran. Too fast, you know, but, um, but yeah, I think that um, also I like, I actually function well in chaos and I like mm -hmm. the de destabilizing effect of having lots of materials and lots of things sort of being part of the input in, of my process. Yeah, and then you get to choose which uh, uh, looks. It's like if you have more data, the more data you have, of course, you could actually, you can misshrew facts with so much data, it actually, in certain settings. But also well, another thing is that as humans, like, you know, we can, like, uh, what was it, a Victor Franco? That we, we can see meaning in different things. Um, and, and we can take meaning and make things meaningful with more options kind of laid out. And especially in the chaos, we can use that for, to thrive and, and um, do better uh, ourselves in the world. Right. And I think meaning comes out of recognition. And it comes out of the kind of specificity that poetry requires, which is to say that the more individualized, the more, more specific, more personalized you become, actually the more universal. And we're, I mean, why else? Because there's only a handful it's a, of subjects. It's a crazy paradox. So it's yeah, just... it is. Why else would we be so attracted to seeing the same kinds of films over and over, listening to music that's, you know, I mean, the, inexhaustible songs about love or about, you know, it's because we're, we're, we're constantly translating our experiences and looking for recognition. And in doing so, it enables us to, to not only sort of um, grasp an idea of what the world is about, but it, it gives us um, a it gives us fuel to carry forward and continue to discover the unknown. Because mm -hmm. I think we, we, you know, so much of the unknown is always in under in the subtext of what what is known. So, um, which is very much like film. And um, absolutely, you like, know, yeah, yeah. I feel like there's a hidden Fellini in each of us that <laughs> wants to say peekaboo. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't quote me on that. No. Be like, no. There's Fellini a hidden... saying what? 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 Saying yeah. <laughs> and, no, I, I agree. And I also feel that grounded, um, you know, that everything, I think in grounded in place and perhaps there's, there's an extension of, of something being grounded in place as being grounded. It's also, um, Grounded in connection, in connection to things, you can look treat things as objects, but uh, as and the objects be important, or you could place the the importance on the relations between those objects, like you do in graph theory for a graph. It's the well, connections between the nodes. I think our Absolutely. mind does that naturally. Absolutely, and I think poetry has a certain way of doing that that makes it beautiful. That will see the love. We'll see these patterns. We'll see these different things in them and we'll breathe it into our body and breathe it out like trees. We exhale. It's like our, our, our oxygen, you know, and, yeah, you know, yeah. so do you have, um, for us, I know that you have uh, a piece that, that, that you find exemplifies this idea of this, this breath work, so to speak of the, the physiology of, uh, of poetry you mean my one of my own poems yes that, you have one of yours that you find relates to this oh um, the, gosh the, 
that breathes this? Yeah, let me see what I have here. Um, <clears throat> okay. And while so, you're doing that, what's your favorite color? Oh. <laughs> Oh my God, I didn't expect that question. <laughs> I know, you know it's a hard question. You know, well, it's interesting because it's like when someone asks you what your, who your favorite poet is, well, that changes over time. And I think my relationship to color has also changed over time. Um, but yeah, I, um, hmm, hmm. I, hmm. <laughs> Well, I'm very, I'm very passionate about the deep sea. So I would mm -hmm. say it's a, it's that, that deep, dark, um, turquoise, blue, green color. I was just um, thinking but, turquoise. But with a splash yeah. of, splash of black in it to make it really dark. Like a lot of the Japanese paintings have that mm -hmm. deeper, darker color. It's an, and I would call it, I would call it forest blue if I, if I could name, name the color. Oh, um, I call it burn blue now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, my newer work, mm -hmm. I mean, although I guess I do, you know, I, a lot of people still say that I, I have a love relationship with language. So I'm trying to think if I can find um, one in one of my newer books that would somehow um, exemplify that. Um, <clears throat> uh, hmm. Hmm. I'm not doing very well in my hair. Oh, I guess I could. Hold on a second. Um, hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna use. Wait. Can you hear me? I can okay. hear you just provably. Okay. So. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to read one of my concordances. I won't tell. A little bit like <laughs> what we're going to do at the end of this program. Um, so I'm, I'm going to read my Shakespeare poem because he's the one mm. that, that has influenced the language the most. And what people don't realize is that he invented over 3,000 words and phrases, and we are still using a lot of his phrases today. Mm. So when I'm teaching younger children um, or high school students or, you know, with, the, with the younger ages, I often say to them, you know, and they kind of moan when you want to bring up Shakespeare. And then you yeah, show... Yeah, because it's translatable of different things. But if you look at it, it's like, wow, you can do this. You can do and look, you can do it in a new way. In fact, this wasn't a hundred percent how people talk in the way of the usage of language, which well, is a thing that people don't really realize that they don't realize that it's not. Well, understood. He's given us all our cliches, all that glitters is gold in my mind's eye, footloose and fancy free salad days. I mean, you could go on and on, but so this is um, from my last book squander um, that um, came out with Omni Don and it's Shakespeare where, where we earned our names. Now, I'm not going to be able to indicate to you, there are little tiny snippets of Shakespeare woven into the poem. In okay. fact, I think language engenders language. And so for me, mm -hmm. those, like one of the snippets, uh, what gave birth to the rest of the poem. Right. Shakespeare, where we earned our names. And some minx's token laid on our tongues, some civilization's content so absolute we can now row a canoe seaward into its azure vault vocabulary. Salt backwards in minutes to name him. What he gave us was more knowledge overwhelmed by seeing us, a violent sorrow. And this sorrow that I have by right is yours, man and woman both empowered out of nature, in some loneliness allure, crossing the face twice, like the cuttlefish turning over its colors, like blame do of blame that first lights on him, then us, following in our body's grammar found by our carnal stings or unbitten lusts, word over word, the ugly part of beauty, moved from the gut to resume the shape of Cordelia in his arms, unfinished storm flower, where the darkness folded up, and you asked yourself, will it eat me? 
Like the feeding earthworm of conscience swallowed by its own red sound, sees incarnadine, faith half asleep in your arms, that what you know always inward breaks, even before it is named, even before it benchmarks who you are. Ooh. So that's a that's that's, uh, that's really a, <laughs> even before it benchmarks who you are, and there you're really getting at it. Of and, and there's another thing where, where you have a flower, you have a certain uh, description, and then you also have of salt backwards. I was like, oh. <laughs> I you can imagine, and there's this surrealism that also happens as a result, and you can also you have the words on different planes of levels of of, of layers of, of contextualization of looking at things. I think that's beautiful and you give birth to that you know kind of you had uh, Fellini in, in different you have different and I'm no film you know you know I love films I <laughs> you know I have Citizen Kane poster on my, my wall but uh <laughs> you know you it's, have different you know uh, it's uh, a ways synest- of doing things yeah sorry to you know it's a synesthetic no. experience um and I and you know I used to be a preschool teacher so what I loved, and there was this book that I haven't been able to find. It, it went out of print, but, but it was a psychology class that I took, and it's by Heinz Werner called The Psychology of Mental Development. And he talked mm-hmm. about how children under the age of five, schizophrenics, truly um, indigenous primitive cultures that are not exposed to Western culture, and poets all share the same <laughs> the same mode of perceiving, which is what he called physiognomic perception, perceiving things of action. And he said, in doing so, children under the age of five naturally use synesthesia, personification, you know, all of those things that a poet wants to go back and do. And and he, he quotes Baudelaire looking at a tree. And Baudelaire says, when you look at the tree, you see all of its, you can describe its beautiful movements. And then you go further and you describe how the movements of the tree are, take on, you know, are personified, take on human <laughs> characteristics until you yes. become the tree yourself. Right. And, and that's absolutely how I think poets allow themselves to engage their minds and their um, physiological experiences. And I always say that language for poets is- It's tapping into the muse. It's a sixth sense, yeah, yeah. And it's tapping into the muse. But it is, I think it's a very functional part of our capability that's not really taught to us or not allowed often, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's also something that can be utilized as it's no longer on the page. You're just, it's something that's lived as well. And it's a way of engaging with their relationship with the with the with the world, and in turn discovering about ourselves. And yeah. it, you know, what are you? You thought I was breaking up. What are you? <laughs> you, you have you have been breaking up a little bit, so I hope it doesn't. Record. Oh no, I was doing that purposely. <laughs> um, what are you? What makes you, have you found recently um, that you've learned, um, that you've discovered from yourself um, through the pandemic, uh, through poetry? Is there anything that you've particularly discovered about yourself, some deep truth that, and I'm saying in a way that can be of service to other individuals, because as you've said, this is, this is, we're, yes. you know, we're in a health exile. I think you yes. used a health I, exile or a social solitude, uh, as I'd say. I, and yeah, no, I do. I have, and I've been thinking a lot about our fast food, fast thinking culture, and and um, in how so much of our culture relies on, um, you know, the 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 quick pleasure of things, and so obviously, it's it's not only kind of thrown time out the window because we've, we've been forced to slow down, which for me has been very good because it's, it's bringing me back into nature. And I think it's bringing a lot of other people back into nature because I love nature. And I feel that that's where my, if I, you know, I don't have a God per se, but I have a spiritual relationship to the force of nature and the, and the beauty of nature. And, and, you know, like I believe in the Stendhal syndrome, you know, you can, you can, 
I'm sure you can immerse yourself in beauty so much so that it becomes overwhelming. And but you're I'm absolved, also, and then you, yeah, you, know, I, you know, I also, just explode, you know? I but, also yeah. think that, um, I mean, not, I, I've always felt uh, compassion. I mean, like, I, I've always, and I've used this probably in every interview I've done, but I'm going to say it again, that Emily Dickinson's quote, which is that genius is the ignition of affection, not intellect. And I think if we slow down and we realize that we are part of one larger body, then we, we will hopefully tap into some more of our compassion because, you know, this, you know, our, our cultural authoritarian Need it's it's very it's, now 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 based and it's and it, now based time, it's, also, it's also it's also separates us by through categories and it and it puts us into these kind of idealized categories that that aren't real to life and I and I feel that if we yeah. if the more real to life we we you know the more acknowledgement we give to what is real and what is right in front of us the more able we might be able to be to ha to show empathy and compassion and to to belong to a larger group and even though we want to identify our differences we also in order to identify them it's more than just identify them and acknowledging them it's acknowledging them in a way that that we have to spend time with understanding you know, like understanding a new, like, I feel like I'm learning. And relating. And relating. And so with each new experience, it's like learning a new language. And I think it's very important for us to understand that, that we're learning the new language of what it means to be human, I hope mm. and think. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a great title for a book. Or that's a thing, <laughs> the new language of what it means to be human. Um, my 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 tell-all during the pandemic. <laughs> I don't know. My tell all. <laughs> My yeah, poetic yeah. tell all. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a visual and it's a visual discourse with the world that we're I think we're being forced Word to pregnancy. Really, you know, we're we're forced to look at yeah. things closely and carefully. Absolutely. You know, I had for me that I had a, an interesting relationship. You know, I had a love affair with Hotchkiss Park in Santa Monica, California, where I just I would you know, went there and I wrote in a journal. I have a collection for that. And I didn't realize there was a tree actually on the journal. I sat underneath a tree um, and just started writing this thing and went three different times, just went there and just wrote. And then I went back, I printed it out and I'm like, I'm going to edit this. And I edited it, you know, just walking in a circle. Um, yeah, I've been told yeah. like, Ruby, and, yeah. But allowed and letting the words influence in my relationship. And I found that it had a different feel. Okay. And who it's like who you are when doing that becomes different. You have a different relationship to what you identify as you. And as a result of that, you can see the world visually, definitely differently. Your surround world changes. Definitely. And our relationship of how we identify between you and me. Because words kind of are labels, you know, we kind of need to break free yeah. from words by, and maybe that's why we need poetry, because it kind of helps us to loosen the grip of, of, uh, of our, our tight grip on language. I don't know. Well, I'm just, I'm yeah. just, I'm just thinking this out. I, I don't know what I'm saying, you know? No, no, it's fine. I, I think that, I mean, I understand what you're saying. And I, um, I, I was saying that. Well, that uh, in some ways it's our only democracy because it 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 provides I mean it provides uh, bridges as much as it provides you know closed doors but I think the more the the larger like you're saying to have a better relationship better understanding of yourself you're going to also have hopefully a better understanding of of others and and not mm -hmm. in a not in a solipsistic sense but in a right in a, a kind of you know just as we are as writers like a loving kindness sense of oh yeah hmm. well and an artist has to challenge their material their whole life they're never they're never without that challenge because the minute you sit on your hands and just you know, think that you've, you've, um, what's the word? You've got the key to the door. That you can don't. be dangerous. <laughs> yeah. So, so I know that I'm going to, I hope that I continue to be a better writer and a better person, um, as I mm. get older. Oh, 
And I'm getting you, all fast. No, <laughs> no, you're not. You're a liar. No, you're not. Ah, listeners, don't believe her. Viewers, don't believe her. Viewers, you see the lovely, lovely Ellen. Um, yeah. Okay, so what what do we do? Do you want me to read one more poem and then yes, we get going? I, I was going to. You're stealing the thing. I wonder, would you share a poem? Um, you know, from your uh, your your if if this makes you uh, this makes you nervous. Uh, yes. Or would that I, make you nervous? No, not at all. In fact, I was going to read mm -hmm. the first poem that I wrote for the book. That's still one of my favorites, and. You know, I mean, okay. our favorites necessarily aren't someone else's favorites, but I think because it started the book, I, I, I grew up with artists and contemporary and conceptual art, and I really wanted to pay homage to that. And But I also wanted to somehow tie it into real life. I've avoided mm -hmm. writing about my real life for a long time, and so... Yeah. Uh, my my father used to say, you know, as an artist, do something that makes you feel uncomfortable. And I thought, okay, that's what I'm going to do. So this was the first poem, and it's about um, me as a nine year old after my half sister died. But it's also the each poem has a title of an artist, so I'm using the artist's mm -hmm. work as a platform to talk about you know several things besides their art so it's not a, mm -hmm. a direct ekphrasis ekphrastic poem it's it's right. it's a an ekphrastic weave if you like um it's called i like Ra that a lot thank you it's called rachel wider reed it's so you could almost lick the sugar cubes stacked in sleep find the hexahedron arc floating today's ocean missing its human animal leaving home Grief is an impression of a missing table under the table, a body departed, withdrawn from the body floating, the color of Halloween candy wrappers. I lived a whole afternoon under the leftover houseboards in our dying garden after my one sister died, after half death of my thinking about death at nine. A black hole can be measured by the sheer speed of what is orbiting around it. If you withdraw one object from its space in a room, measure what's left, all the empty parts, you have a child inside a box, a box thinking outside itself. Oh, snap, snap, snap. Clap, um, Rachel Wider reading with applause. boxes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, and in, you know, we had uh, um, uh, Lauren Camp, who uh, 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 was is a friend of uh, the show of Assiduous Dust was on um, and she had a took house and she had this thing with boxes that was just really uh, interesting for that. I'm sure she loved that. That just comes to mind. But also that phrase of, you know, th those last two lines, would you please read those last two lines again for us? Yeah. If you would. And because she worked a lot with boxes and she, she cast spaces like she would cast the space under a table or yeah. she would cast a whole room yeah. she, she would cast, cast the first box you know she would it's cast not... empty spaces yeah. so and i feel like grief is like like a cast empty space inside of you um if you withdraw one object from its space in a room measure what's left all the empty parts you have a child inside a box a box thinking outside itself yeah, yeah. Oh. You know, Joshua, I can see my, my computer's about to run out of, com of a battery. Let me grab my, my cord. Hold on. Okay. Sounds good. The child is now outside the box. The recording box. Yeah, almost back in the box. The child I'm is so now sorry. back in the box. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm using an old computer for Skype, and um, I there we go. Okay, I'm back. You. This is like <laughs> you're in, um, in your face. Okay, here we are. Yeah, I forgive you. And I, I, I gotta <laughs> say that it no, it, it worked because I was saying the child is not. 
is out of the box. Okay. The child is in the box. And now you're <laughs> in. And that's the thing. We also connect to our inner child. You know, for me, I had, um, I had a collection out of, uh, you know, of, about me with vulnerability and, uh, you know, inspired from my, my grandfather um, had passed. And he always wanted me to uh, have my work out there and yeah. get that out there. And I had a professor just suggest maybe want to publish a poem. And I did. And uh, so I was trying to put some stuff to honor him and realized, wow, a lot of what I was writing was about me with my you know, autism and addiction, sobriety and spirituality and being vulnerable with that. that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I also had to think about for me with boxes, like what's it mean with, I looked at labels also, I then started thinking about this of, uh, you know, I was talking with some people and while I'm writing this book, I'm like, you know, do I say I have autism or am I autistic? you know, in different things of labels and how, what does that say right. about my identity and who I am right. and different things that the boxes we designate say something about us. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think that, I think we're always in touch with, you know, it sounds like pseudo psychology, but it's not. I think childhood informs who we are as adults and, and it depends on what areas of, your childhood have power over you or not. And I, you know, that's when actually a 12 step program really comes in handy because mm -hmm. I believe that all living should be sort of one day at a time. Yeah. It keeps us in the present. I think if poets or, you know, 12 step <laughs> things, if that was like required or something for, for like the Senate and Congress and all that, man, that would be so great because poets are so compassionate and they're so, you know, of that. And then you have a 12 step of a certain thing. So you need compassion as well as, uh, you know, inner, inner work, and, uh, some type of thing like that. I think that's yeah. important. Yeah. yeah. Politicians I, sometimes don't have as good a uh, uh, relationship with their inner child. I don't know if you noticed. Definitely not, because, you know, you have to be vulnerable to be an artist. And um, they don't want to be, they don't want to appear being vulnerable. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get some more vulnerability, um, soon. I hope, <laughs> I hope. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, you know what I'm going to do. I do. <laughs> okay. Would you be vulnerable with me and us put ourselves outside of the box in order to get in the box? And then become the box and be and run from our box, but find ourselves trapped in the box, but realizing we are the box and not the box, be able to separate ourselves from the box to be able to see that we really are a beautiful and so and breed that with beauty in the park of gratitude and this weird duality called the on the spot collaborative poem OTSCP of Sigurdas was that that was that I told you it was going to be a lot and it was going to be it was going to be um, bizarre. Did Just it live so, up to that? Uh, yes, I'm I'm ready for it. Just so you know, though, you keep cutting out. Just uh, hopefully it won't be recorded because <laughs> you're. But but maybe it goes with what we're about to do. There's like. We you know, go in and out and out of the box. Maybe it works. Maybe it's the new thing. Yeah, it's a, it's the the moving frame, the f frame by frame. So, um, do I pick up my computer? We'll and make it, it in all black and white, and then it'll work. <laughs> take it over to my space. Okay, you get to see <clears throat> something. Yes. Would you please show us? your uh what books do you have names of authors and titles do you have for us today what uh, authors uh okay, titles cool. and books do you have uh today for us and, and uh the page numbers please if you would oh. you'll just get my eye okay and, like part of my mustache okay um hold on so i have um a book that 
is edited by Elizabeth Janice and Gloria Moray, and it's called Tony Ausler, who's an artist, and it's on page 118 and 119. Okay. Um, I have my my uh, mask book that came out with Tupelo Press, opened on page 40 and 41. I have a book by Maggie Nelson called The Art of Cruelty, and it's opened on 138 and 139. Wait, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> Am I supposed to show you the pages? Not unless you want to. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. But um, I love your house, your, your place. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's yeah. a bit, bit of bit like my mind a little bit of chaos right now um and i have a bird watcher's bible national geographic opened on 142 and 143 and a book on magritte by Susie gaplick opened at page 106 and 107 is that enough books or do we need more I think that's perfect. And okay. so I have out, I have Sylvia Plass Aria, the restored, um, the restored edition. And I have that open to, uh, you guessed it, daddy. And yes, I do have daddy issues and I'm not ashamed of it. Uh, pages 74 and 75. So that's the first. Then I have out, um, it's a recent book uh, published with Harper uh, Collins. Uh, of Brian Sonia Wallace, uh, who's the upcoming of uh, Poet Laureate of West uh, Hollywood, California. And it is the poetry of strangers. And I have 18 and 19. And then I have out this lovely book, uh, the anthology. I was actually uh, included in this. And this um, was uh, received the... Uh, won the finalist award for um uh the 2020 best book uh uh, uh of a national contest in nonfiction anthology which is a lovely covid um historic covid thing of, of lived in time what's uh of lived in time poetry and prose and i have it out to the last page of a piece by richard blanca that was in um uh, and that's, this is, uh, when the virus, uh, came calling, um, COVID strikes, COVID-19 strikes America and page 118, which is this poem is not a poem, but it is a poem and it's by, let me see. So it's the first page by Melinda Palicio. That's 181. And then I had the beat book edited Diane De Prima, and I have that out, or edited by Ann Waldman, and I have the poems, I have it out, is of Diane De Prima, the late Diane De Prima, to 180, oh, no, 140 and 141, so it's the second and third page of the groovy poem, Rant. Okay. So that's what I'm working with here. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so you know the name of the game. Would you begin for us? Would yes. Would you like to go first? Sure, why not? Okay. Okay. The business of love is cruelty. A prayer will be a caterpillar of scene. Because every human being has a strong natural bent. To evolve strategy, someone else's wings. Personally offended, soiled and colonized what it meant. The only spiritual drinking games finished Belsen Vienna a single swarms 
Violent green swallows among wood warblers. Ads, maybe, roses, butterflies. For years, the clear squeak, heads wide. Here is her compatriot divide, the flesh. Flaming your world, clothes the box, mask the book. A rose can fly. Nature art offers this impression of truth. That became greed before finches subsumed. Can you blame anyone? Perhaps it is just the religious life raised up somewhere from the sea. To be sure, a consciousness I read, I think, on stage, danced, insisted, thoughts cared, lines stuffed, nature heal. Between the desire to communicate and the desire to hide. Imagination can fight starvation possibility doesn't want you i'm struck by butterflies an engine to kill i wanted to get away from the small scale in a muddy imagination famine now the process, the smudge you do not like, a swastika. At that time, and was my state of mind, the text ground a given subject, there was a lost journey. A self-making you, no matter who, Los Mananas singing yesterday, reading seen nodded voice. I have a flashback to imagination. The body's alliterative answer back in his direction. Bitter, a man's allegory. Risking lines in line so long ago, weird and gypsy. I couldn't hear that last line, but and gypsy and gypsy. weird and gypsy. <laughs> the disposition to fall in with it, according to pretend. Breton, it is the mind which seizes the rapport between those two realities. That matters mouse over power objector, your poetics contamination daylight. Nobody's worth a blue year's percentage. Chrysalis, kind of pure or bird calls and the impulse the order is born of fear and desire the only happy birthday that last thought after you figure your person spools shuffing <laughs> priests of truth Pieces of art, something that would be called golden by the end of evolve war. Only yourself is what you dream. History is the war of no poem, not a 
breath, prayer, gloved by pay. But all approach, tell us all that is no reason to banish or belittle it. We exalt artists as beautiful liars, the moralistic paradigm that doesn't even begin. Worn out, manic manically consent, burning maybe birthday, maybe subsumed imagination. Filling the whole house, waist high with its green water, unfolding water, forgetting floorboards or cracks, swimming a single stroke for the doors, flume to the attic, flimmering and closing the fire trap, watering a mirror's sweep. Nothing is, claust is claustrophobia. Nothing is no matter between the dream and saving language. I folded my bed up. I said, fuck it, and made myself leave the room. The whole thing was done by pointing the camera out of my window or shooting miniature sets on the floor. A soundtrack. That's a great ending. I love that. That's a great ending. Uh, we have to figure out what to call that. Well, thank you so much. Oh, uh, thank you, Joshua. This, this has just been lovely. And, you know, maybe we'll make this black and white. And maybe maybe I'll put some weird sound effects. We'll see. Maybe not. <laughs> and we'll see if that works with, the, with, the, with what we're well, dealing with. I noticed mm -hmm. there were lots of birds and things going on, so it it had it had some unifying elements. And yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> Thank absolutely. You. This, this is so much fun, and and it, you obviously you have a great series going here. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you so, so much. much. Well, be <laughs> sure to tune in, and this will be also more in in uh, well season two and in twenty twenty one. We have uh, some groovy guests. Um, Thanks for and having. Then we have episode. Uh, 16 will be uh with uh will be uh terrific thank you thank you so much and um any uh social media where can people find uh you on social media your website would you any shout outs that you'd like to uh, offer or um, final words well final words be safe and thrive in language and um, I'm on most of the social media so I'll see you there <laughs> sounds groovy <laughs> groovy oh. groovy uh, until next time Thank all you. right lots of love bye